Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Tuesday the 25th of August 2020 and on Sunday we published a video entitled Gold and Silver Prices Driven by ETF Demand where we pointed out that a significant cause of gold and silver price increases have been the insatiable demand via ETF buying. Now yesterday the headlines in much of the financial media were based around US stocks rising to record highs and bonds falling on signs that the Trump administration may fast track vaccines and treatments for coronavirus. In fact we quote Bloomberg which said quote US stocks rose to record highs and bond fell on signs that the Trump administration may fast track vaccines and treatments for coronavirus. The S&P notched another all-time high as optimism mounted that the virus wouldn't hamper growth. The Nasdaq Composite also closed a record for a second consecutive session." Unquote. Well, at the time of writing, which is currently 1840 GMT plus one, markets are marginally up, save the Dow Jones, which is down 117 points, at 28,191. The S&P 500 is up 4 points at 3,435 and the Nasdaq is up 45 points at 11,425. European markets closed generally flat. The dollar index is down 0.16 today at 93.14 and gold is standing at $1,919 down $14 in the last 24 hours and silver is down 33 cents at $26.43. The Consumer Confidence Index for August, published earlier, came in at 84.8 compared with 91.7 in July and against expectations of 93, so a disappointing figure. New home sales though for July paint a positive picture, up 110,000 new homes, that's additional over last month, or at least compared with June. The interesting point we're noticing is that one could have really expected a slight rise in gold and silver prices today if only because of the increase in COVID-19 infections across the world. A number of banks and companies announcing significant closures and profit warnings and of course equity markets taking a breather from recent rises. Now that said though there is some optimism about a vaccine and only time will tell whether the optimistic outlook is achieved or not. What we can say though is that the consumer confidence figures mentioned earlier paint a somewhat darker picture moving forward and we shall take a brief look at two articles, one published by Bloomberg and the other by Reuters dealing with these issues that we have just covered. The Reuters article is to be frank a little laborious as it includes in our view too many figures but it is pointing out that whilst home sales have risen there is the severe prospect of people not affording their bills as weekly unemployment checks are halved and many analysts are predicting that any serious recovery in the job market to pre-COVID levels will not be achieved until at least mid or late 2022. So let's just take a look at these two articles, the first by Bloomberg and the second by Reuters. Bloomberg article dated August 25th, 2020, 6.55 p.m. GMT plus one. Stocks mixed after setting record high. Bonds drop. U.S. equities were mixed after the S&P 500 reached an all-time high for a third consecutive trading session. Treasury yields increased and the dollar weakened. The Nasdaq Composite remained in the green after also notching another record, while the Dow Jones Industrial Average declined for the first time in four days. Futures had risen as America and China signalled progress on their Phase 1 trade deal. The Stocks Europe 600 Index advanced for a second day after figures showed German companies turning slightly more optimistic on the economic recovery. Markets have been ripping higher over the past week. It's only natural at some point we take a breather and take stock of where we are, said Michael Reynolds, investment strategy officer, Glenmead Trust Co. Oil rose as traders eyed tropical storm Laura, which is expected to strengthen into a hurricane before making landfall later this week. U.S. gasoline futures rose to the highest level since March on concern over possible fuel shortages. In addition to geopolitics and business confidence, investors are focused on vaccine progress 
as global economies reopen amid fresh outbreaks of the virus. Moderna Inc. said it's near a deal to supply at least 80 million vaccine doses to the European Union. The pattern we're watching seems to be vaccine clarity, means by the socially distant losers, all of the sectors that have be taken a beaten since you cannot get together, said Mike Bailey, Director of Research at FBB Capital Partners. Traders are also awaiting Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's scheduled speech on Thursday about the Fed's long-awaited monetary policy framework review, which has focused on a new inflation strategy. If you think about what's been driving markets, it's really been the pace of recovery, and primarily multiples have expanded due to hyper-loose monetary policy. Troy Gayeski, co-chief investment officer at Skybridge Capital, told Bloomberg TV. Elsewhere, gold traded below $1,950 an ounce. Some key events coming up. Earnings from companies including ICBC, PetroChina, HP Inc., Royal Bank of Canada and Dollar General. The US Republican National Convention runs this week. The Bank of Korea sets monetary policy and will hold a briefing on Thursday. And the Fed Chair Powell speaks at an event on Thursday. Reuters article dated August 25th, 5.57pm, updated at 1900pm, or 1900 GMT plus one. US consumer confidence dropped to a more than six-year low in August as households worried about the labour market and incomes, casting doubts on the sustainability of the economy's recovery from the COVID-19 recession. The second straight monthly decrease in consumer confidence reported by the conference board on Tuesday overshadowed an acceleration in new single-family home sales to a more than 13.5-year high in July. The housing market continues to show strong immunity to the coronavirus crisis. The ebb in confidence followed the expiration of a $600 weekly unemployment benefit supplement on July 31st and a flare-up in new coronavirus infections across the country, which forced some jurisdictions to shut down businesses again or pause reopenings. Though new cases have subsided, hot spots remain. Today's data are telling us that while some lucky workers are able to buy new homes, Millions of others are unable to afford life's necessities and pay the rent, especially after the federal government cancelled those $600 checks, said Chris Rupke, chief economist at MUFG in New York. The consumer is the most worried they have been all year, which pours cold water on the idea that the economic recovery is sustainable. The conference board said its consumer confidence index dropped to a reading of 848 this month, the lowest since May 2014 from 91.7 in July. Economists polled by Reuters had forecast the index edging up to a reading of 93 in August. The survey's present situation measure, based on consumers' assessments of current business and labour market conditions, tumbled to a reading of 84.2 this month from 95.9 in July. The Expectations Index, based on consumers' short-term outlook for income, business and labour market conditions, dropped to 85.2 from a reading of 88.9 in July. The survey's so-called labour market differential, derived from data on respondents' views on whether jobs are plentiful or hard to get, deteriorated to a reading of minus 3.7 this month from 2.2, that's a plus 2.2, in July. That measure closely correlates to the unemployment rate in the Labour Market's Labour Department's employment report. It has dropped from as high as 38.3 in August last year and fits in with views that the labour market recovery is losing speed after non-farm payrolls increased by 1.763 million jobs in July after a record jump of 4.791 million in June. The share of consumers expecting an increase in income fell to 12.7% this month from 14.8% in July and the proportion anticipating a drop increased to 16.6% from 15.8% last month. 
The weekly unemployment supplement has been cut to $300. Economists estimate the reduced unemployment benefit will slash about $50 billion from retail sales in August and restrain consumer spending, the main driver of the economy. We are clearly in the second phase of the recovery, driven by underlying fundamentals rather than purely the surge in inactivity as household re-engaged, said James Knightley, chief international economist at ING in New York. This reinforces our view that a V-shaped recovery will not happen. The US economy is unlikely to recover all of its lost output until mid-2022. The economy slipped into recession in February. Gross domestic product contracted in the second quarter at its steepest pace in at least 73 years. Stocks on Wall Street were mixed after a three-day rally. The dollar fell against a basket of currencies. US Treasury prices were down. So a positive picture on the one hand and a gloomy one on the other. Of course, the current US administration is going to be as optimistic as possible while the Republican conference is on. But the underlying data is suggesting a potentially different image. That said, much can change in a few short months. But as other countries around the world are also now experiencing, unless an effective vaccine is found, developed and used, the world's economy is going to remain under severe threat for some time to come. And even us in the United Kingdom are now discovering that despite the number of deaths have declined, numerous businesses are making closure announcements. What do you think? Do share your thoughts. Thank you so much for listening. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell sign so that you're notified of our videos as and when they are published. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.